You know, the viaduct has been in the civic imagination for a long time. Uh, decades before it was actually built, people dreamed of a freeway that would circumvent downtown Seattle. There was so much congestion, particularly on the waterfront. You know, we were a shipping center and the waterfront was busy with shipbuilding, with cargo being transferred. They wanted to get all the traffic out of their backyard, so to speak. They wanted to have free access to the piers and to all the shipping activity that happened downtown. So the viaduct was a way to um, circumvent that. Remember that in the early 20th century, the number of cars on the street was proliferating. We think of traffic jams now. There were traffic jams back then on streets that had not even seen a car a few years before. So somehow building a route that would get through all that, beneath all that, or as it turned out, above all that, was long dreamed of, and that's what led eventually to the viaduct. Uh, originally, the dream was that there would be two, one on the west, which is essentially what the viaduct became, and one on the east, which eventually became I-5. But the viaduct pathway was the cheaper and easier to construct, principally because so much of the right-of-way was already publicly owned. So the viaduct got the attention, it got the money, and uh, they broke ground in 1950. But the interesting thing is they didn't actually complete the viaduct until 1966. It was a 15-year-plus project. Uh, some engineers wanted the freeway to just cut through the city with very few chances to get off in the middle of downtown. But think about those downtown merchants and property owners. They didn't want all those cars flying past them. They wanted those cars to end up in downtown and essentially become their customers. So there was a lot of debate about where do we put the on and off ramps in the central part of the city. In fact, the Downtown Seattle Association was formed in part to help mitigate the impacts of the viaduct and to make sure the viaduct was serving downtown as well as the suburbs to the north and south. Many cities, as a major infrastructure project, created elevated highways. There were many cities that wanted to bypass the clutter of what was on the street level. So the West Side Highway in New York, Wacker Drive in Chicago, the Embarcadero in San Francisco, the viaduct fell into that category. There was really design remorse even before it was built. Some of the best architects in the city took strong objection to the notion of this elevated freeway. Uh, they thought the uh, pylons were too thick, they thought the roadway itself was too ungainly, they felt it had absolutely no design amenities that would make it a more compatible part of the visual landscape. So from the very beginning people said, you know, this, this doesn't look right. But the engineers, as often happens in Seattle history, held sway. Uh, they said it may not be beautiful, but it will be functional, it will be utilitarian, and it will be affordable. And that carried the day. Ultimately, 100,000 cars a day would use the viaduct. And this was just in the first couple of years of its use. So from the very beginning, it solved a, a core transportation challenge. A couple little known facts. Um, as the original designs were being uh, presented to the public, one of Seattle's great architects, Paul Theory, said, you know what you really need to have is a tunnel. So it's interesting that in some ways history is the future going back to where we were decades ago. Another fact that I love to share with people is that our uh, Governor Dan Evans, his very first job as a young engineer was to help design the viaduct. Now another progress report from Mayor Clinton. I thought perhaps you'd be interested in seeing a few of our most recent traffic improvements. The Broad and Mercer Street underpass, the Alaskan Way viaduct extension. The viaduct was really a signal of Seattle's coming of age as a modern American city after the war. You couldn't be a modern city if you had to have all your cars go on surface streets. You had to have that freeway. It let Seattleites know that we were a modern, growing, progressive American city. It will definitely be a passing of an era, but I think where we can take some comfort is that we know that what's coming next is universally believed to be an improvement in terms of how we can reconnect with our central waterfront. Watch CityStream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel, or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.